Welcome back to our special report, Finding Hope Together, a more diversified police department has been talked about in Erie for decades with limited progress. The city now says a goal for this year is to increase the number of minority applicants by 15%, but there's obviously work to do. One week ago, the city swore in six new officers, um, all of them men, all of them white. Among the 173 members of the Erie Police Department, there are reportedly nine women on the force, six black officers, three Hispanic officers. However, the number of minority candidates who have applied to take this year's police test is about double last year's from what we understand, and the police chief is shaking his head yes. At the same time, there is also the job, though, of restoring trust for those who don't believe police will serve or protect them. Now, this clearly is not new. Tensions have been around for a long time. Police Chief Dan Spizarni, um, I'll start with you. Uh, how would you describe the situation in the wake of, of what we've seen this summer? In here. Well, Sean, what we've got right now is uh, a push to get more minority candidates to take the test. That's been one of the drawbacks, is the very small minority to take it. Um, we've done studies, we've, we're doing research. Uh, we received a grant last year that we, apply, or we applied last year and got the grant this year. Uh, Sergeant Tom Lennox, who's here today with us, mm -hmm. has actually now moved into a full-time position. And his job is not only to run the PAL program, but is going to also be recruiting. And through his works in just the short time this year, he don't, didn't start till June 1st, and he already was able to move the needle on how many came. Um, I don't have the certified list yet, but it looks like that there is a African American male that will be in the top 10. And uh, we're quite happy about that, and we hope it works out. Um, well, Chief, let's send, it, let's send it over to Sergeant Lennox over in the QLN studios, get his feelings on it, because this has been his job. You mentioned, pal, the Police Athletic League, but also he has been kind of in charge of, of trying to recruit more minorities for the force. Sergeant Lennox, how would you describe the situation? Um, I mean, I would describe the situation um, just being on the front line of that um, initiative probably for the last 10 years. And before I even start off, I mean, I'd like to, you know, first off by saying that um, listening to Bishop Brock, Andre, and uh, Miss McNair and everybody commenting on, uh, you know, the issue uh, regarding racism, you know, the bottom line is, you know, r you know, racism has been around on all fronts probably since I've been born, you know, and, uh, you know, I think part of the, you know, the complex, you know, problem with that through, through, throughout the decades is, you know, when things sort of go away, I think everybody becomes complacent and they don't impose, your, impose their will on every side. And I, and I, and I think that, you know, it, until recently, you know, uh, you know, everybody is now, you know, sitting down and having these conversations that are pretty uncomfortable, and you know, and, tr and being honest with uh, one another on all fronts. So, with that being said, um, you know, I've been blessed and fortunate to see a lot of you know the positive changes that have been going on throughout the city uh, for the last several several years. And it, and this, and that doesn't mean that we don't need to continue to make progress because we got a lot of work to do. But I know as, as my time as a police officer in the city of Erie for the last 15 years, within the last two and a half to three years, this is the most I've seen the city actually executing some of the initiatives uh, you know, that are going on within our city. So I don't want to shortchange the fact that you know, there is, there is a lot of work that needs to be done, but I definitely don't want to lose sight of the fact that there has been a lot of progression, and what that's going to take is everybody on all fronts to first be honest with one another, okay, and sit down and continue to have these conversations other than when we have a night like May 31st, mm -hmm. which was truly heartbreaking, and it, it is not indicative of what Erie truly is fact with regards to the recruiting um you know i'm very proud and again a lot more work to do and this is where i summon the help not only of our police department it is the first time that i believe that the city missed the boat the last prior 
to making this assigning somebody in a full time position to you know actively go out there on a yearly basis because recruiting, as we know, doesn't start when uh, you know it's particularly in the African American community. It doesn't start at the age of 21 to 24. This is something that has to occur at a very young age, between seven the whole way up through and follow the journey and the process. It's not something that's going to change overnight, but at the end of the day, it's going to take a collaborative effort from not only the police department, the city of Erie school district, and members of our community to start talking about how police work is a noble profession. It is a job that comes with a lot of rewards. Yes, there are obstacles and challenges with that comes with that position, okay? And so, it, you know, I mean, it's going to take a collaborative effort by everyone. Well, let's see, too. Let's put this out there to all of our panelists. How right. do you get this done? Well, yeah, how do you... Re We've heard it year after build, year. Build the trust that, that, that Sergeant Lennox had mentioned, that police work is, is a noble profession, and, and how do you get... Um, Bishop more Brock would like to respond to that. More people in the that. minority community to see it that way. Bishop Brock, I know you have your hand up over there. Okay, thank you very kindly. Look here, one of the things that that's in, important when we were all growing up, uh, back whenever that was, we said, "I, I want to be a police officer. I want to be a fireman. I want to be this. I want to do that." We have a the United Clergy of Erie. We've been meeting. And I want to announce that we've had uh, five meetings with the command staff and uh, the mayor's administration of the Erie Police Department, five very positive, very good meetings where we've met behind closed doors and had uncomfortable, painful conversations, but yet necessary conversations. Point number two, don't forget, let us not forget that Erie made history when we were able to bring over 25 hundred people together in a peaceful protest, in a peaceful demonstration, people coming together, people that love one another, love our city, love uh, civility, love humanity, understanding we have one race. So we made history, all right? So let's not forget that point. Then thirdly, it's imperative, as Officer Lennox just stated, that we start early. So we have a 10-point plan that we'll be presenting to the mayor and Chief Spazarni in just uh, next week. Ten points where we would like to see reform in a positive way with the Erie Police Department. Police officers going into the schools, not as guardians, but as educators, educating our young boys and our young women and young little girls about the positive aspects of what it is to be a police officer. So we can do this if we come together, have the uncomfortable conversation, and implement these uh, reforms uh, in our uh, police department here in Erie. Uh, Mayor Schember, reaction to that? I, mean, I, I totally agree with Bishop Brock. I mean, we've known each other for years and, and worked together for years long before I was even mayor. I was happy to teach classes at, at, you know, over at his place. And uh, I, I totally agree with him. There's a lot we still have to do. But as Bishop Brock is, I am totally committed to doing whatever it takes to eliminate racism and prejudice. Just think what an incredible city this could be if everyone in it is valued for the unique talents that every individual here has. I, I just can't say that often enough, and I look forward to making it happen. Well, we're well under five minutes now, so we just want to let everyone know that we're trying to cover as much as we can. We understand uh, it's not much time for such a huge topic. We want to end, though, on the topic of achieving equality, um, because, of course, talking about it and achieving it are two very, very different things. As tough as the conversations can be, action is the ultimate goal. Now, during the protests over the summer, much has been made about the number of whites who marched in the streets and have become part of the Black Lives Matter movement. Many of those people hoping that this is a sign real systemic change is possible, but again, it apparently won't be easy. Using a 2019 poll from Pew Research polling website, 538 people asked in June, what percentage of black and white respondents do you think said that it is very or somewhat likely that black people in the U.S. will eventually have equal rights? 80% of the whites said yes, just 35% of blacks agreed. Uh, so what's next? Where do we begin? I want to get some reaction to that poll question. Yeah. Uh, let's start with Angela McNair. Uh, what do you think of those numbers? Um, I, I just want to say as far as achieving equality, um, just point 
um, blank and um, you know simple that it's not about equality it's about equity um, uh, racism may never go away that's not something you can cure um, a, with a shot you have to be able to as um, our mayor and as our other elected officials including myself you have to be able to try to support equity. We have to build things that will empower the people who are suffering or victimized by the things that are going on that are causing things to be unequal. So it's beyond equality. We have to provide equity, solutions, and support for the things that are going on in the community, such as recruiting more um, minority police officers, such as hiring more minorities, such as um, you know fair punishments for everybody who um, is um, facing things. So uh, my, my point is just making sure that we provide some type of equity um, for everybody, uh, all the minorities in this city. Yeah, Andre, I'm, I'm interested in your uh, take on that poll number. Just 35% of blacks uh, believe they will eventually see equality, and and that that's a troubling number, I think, to a lot of people. <clears throat> yes, y yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. So you're comparing the amount of white people, um, I guess you know, and I, I say that as kindly as possible, um, to the amount of African American people or minorities that think that they're going to achieve equality. Now, you don't need to look at the number of white people that think that equality will be achieved. Um, because their equality is already achieved and has been. Um, you have to look at the 35%. That's the number that matters there. Um, the way to bring that number up is simply by investing in these communities, making sure these people have the jobs that they need to take care of their family. The average uh, net worth of a white family, and correct me if I'm mistaken, somebody fact check me please after this is over, um, is about six figures. Um, then the average net worth of a minority family is uh, tens of thousands of dollars. Do the math. All right, Andre Rosado and, and everyone who has been here, thank you so much. Yeah, we know we have just scratched the surface of this vital topic, but unfortunately we are out of time. Yeah, and we want to thank everyone who helped us out tonight by coming and giving of their time to just begin this conversation that we hope we can keep going. Jet 24 Action News at 6 begins right now.